Rod division and disunity brings a pre-Ezekiel slaughter. This is the question that we're going to address today, brethren. Uh, as you know, many of us are, are well aware of the current teachings going on today about uh, so much disunity and so much uh, doctrines and so much uh, rod groups and so forth that some brethren are saying, well, the work cannot go forward. It cannot go forward with unity and power until the false brethren, the uh, the uh, troublemakers, and all these uh, splinters and, and so forth are taken away by the Lord. But is this so? Is this a, a correct teaching, a correct doctrine that we should be uh, considering and teaching? Or is this uh, something that needs to be uh, cleared up uh, from the straight uh, thus saith the Lord, and also the rod message. So we have prayed, and we ask that you do the same. Claim John sixteen thirteen, and which uh, the Lord will be faithful and uh, guide us into all truth. So let's look at this study today. And uh, as the picture shows, uh, early Christians, including the apostles and disciples, uh, were involved in disagreements, false doctrines, splinters, infiltration, separate groups, and a whole myriad of influences that cause division. Apostle Paul highlighted this fact out. And these quotes are found uh, in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 11 to 14, and we read, My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Caiaphas, or Caiaphas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So Paul here is instructing his uh, his followers or his uh, his fellow brethren that this division can't go on. We have to come together as a people and. Uh, you know, when you follow off into a splinter groups and this and that, you you got to remember the, the king leader, which is Christ. And then again, he has uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3 to 4. You are still worldly, worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Paulus, are you not mere human beings? For when one says, I follow Paul, and the other, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? So we see this, that Brother Paul is making a very strong point that we can't lose track of. It is Christ who is in charge, not these uh, fellow uh, uh, so-called uh, exalted ones that are proclaiming a message that, uh, you know, I am the one that you need to listen to and follow me and uh, and so forth. So we have to keep this clearly in mind that Christ is still the one in charge. And then, of course, this is complicated by the further division which we know uh, existed in the early church. Uh, Christ himself said, you hate the works of Nicolaitans which I also hate. The powerful delusion of the Nicolaitans was causing tremendous issues within the early Christian movement. Even our Lord pointed this out, this decision, uh, excuse me, the delusion out. So we see clearly that this was a big thing back then, brother. The teaching here was tremendously uh, causing much, much disruption. Uh, it was a... Uh, a situation that was so important that the Lord made mention of it mentioned in Revelation uh, 2 6 and what did he say he hated it that's pretty serious so we know that a lot of strange fire doctrine was coming into the early church this is a fact and historic uh, occurrence that we need to take focus of as we go through in our study The doctrine of the Nicolaitans was known as a perverse doctrine of grace. And you can find more of that in the uh, Wikipedia article, Nicolaitanism. Uh, sins were excused and not, not looked on as serious, a blasphemous position. <clears throat> so apparently, 
there was uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, misguided uh, teaching here. And from what I gathered in the studies that we've done is that uh, certain uh, perverse uh, things were allowed. I mean, they had, uh, quote, uh, holy prostitutes that were involved, and, and this was looked upon as uh, some type of a acceptable practice. And, uh, and then we had other sins of uh, eating certain meats and so forth, and this was acceptable in the uh, general idea that grace was so sufficient that it would cover these discrepancies or these these. Uh, strange uh, behaviors that uh, some of these people were teaching. So this is what the atmosphere was about in the early Christian church. So let's keep this in mind. This wasn't the main uh, problem. I mean, this was a main problem, but the Lord was still in charge. Let's keep that in mind. And then, of course, we have the uh, chart that's given in the Rod message, the seven churches. And you can see right here, we'll take our arrow. This is the top, this is the area that we're describing right now. And uh, this is the first church. This is the Ephesus, the first church that came out of the Christian movement. So this is where the Lord addressed uh, that false teaching. And uh, it showed that our, our very first church with the apostles and the disciples and all these men that knew Christ, and were a part of that very early movement, had some disunity, had some false doctrine, had a lot of trouble. So let's keep that in mind as we go forward. So when we understand that, we know that a certain teaching today, our enemy has brought in. And where do they get this enemy? I mean, this, this adversary teaching is from misinterpreting this quote. And we can see that this is found in two answer, page 55. And we want to highlight the red area. You can read this whole quote in your leisure, but, and as a result, we also are held back and will continue to be until the Lord manifests his power, takes away among, from among us the pretending ones, makes us free from sin and sinners. Now, we want to bring this to our attention because according to Brother Michael Sam, who we just had recently on a phone conference call, uh, this actual quote was the beginning of uh, one of the most strange fire uh, movements today, the wave sheet. And so according to uh, Michael Sam, uh, this was the impetus to start that movement because Brother Sam took this reference and said, see here? You need a pre-purification. We can't move forward until the Lord actually manifests his power. Total misrepresentation, brethren, of this quote. So we need to ask the questions at this point. In the type, the aforementioned early Christian troubles with false doctrines, false leaders, many divisions, sects, etc., did the Lord make a move, a purification move? Number two, was the Lord working through his people despite these problems? Of course, we know our answer is yes. The Lord saw all these different areas of trouble. He saw one group following another and, and uh, followers following these strange fire teachings of, of perverted grace. And uh, uh, some of the Jews were coming in saying you have to keep part of the... Uh, old ceremonial law, along with the new Christian belief, all kinds of this stuff, brethren, was the atmosphere of the very beginning first church. Did the Lord make a move to purify that? No, he did not. This is the type. This is the type we have to fall back on. So our key point so far in the study is that the doctrine says the the Oasis doctrine, all those that promote this, say that the Lord must purify his divinian uh, servants, sometimes known as the day of reckoning, teaching, and it is not supported in type. To answer, page 55 is talking about the upcoming Ezekiel 9 purification, not a pre purification of Davidia. This will purify both SDA and 
and DSDA. The misinterpreters of that quote are constructing their own ideas not grounded upon the scriptural word or the rod message. So this is the key points that we need to take away from this study, brethren, is that both in the type and the message itself clearly show us that Ezekiel 9 is the time when the tares uh, will be removed from the wheat. Not this day of reckoning. This is a phony, false doctrine that needs to be exposed. Our Lord himself said, Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into his barn. Matthew 13, 30. And then we have this rod quote, one answer, page 77, 1944. So this was made in 1944. This is a key date. We'll explain that in a second. Let all the heaven sent messages, like all the heaven sent messages preceding it, the rod message is, according to Ezekiel prophecy in chapter 9 and testimonies and ministers, page 445, set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, Luke 2, 34. It is exactly calculated to bring about a sifting, a separation of the tares from among the wheat in the church membership. See also early writing, page 270. Now we need to take note, this reference was published in 1944, thus showing that the rod consistently teach that the separation of the tares from among the wheat in the church me membership is Ezekiel 9. Now, why we highlight this, brethren, is because 1944 is a year after 1943. Now, what happened in 1943? We just had that phone conference I mentioned, and the leader of Wave Sheep, Lennox Sam, came on and joined us. And what did we hear from him? 1943, Leviticus Tract, page 3 is when, quote, new light came on the teaching of the first of the first fruits. So, in the wave sheet. So that is why we want to highlight this, that because he teaches that teaching, that's, the, that's uh, further supporting his day of reckoning. But that's not so, because in 1944, one year after that so-called new light came about the first of the first fruits, the Davidians, it says here that the separation is Ezekiel 9. It doesn't say uh, the separation is the day of reckoning, or there's a first separation coming, or there's going to be two separations within the church, the day of reckoning and the day uh, of the SDA church, or anything like that, brother. We have to stick clearly to what the rod message says. And according to this scripture, or this, uh, this reference here, uh, the dates. We have to follow along. This light was very evident in 1944, and that is behind, uh, after 1943. So, this idea that 1943 new light came falls short. So, that concludes this study. Uh, if you'd like to have further uh, comments or questions directed to us, you can contact us at our email there. And also, we're very active on the uh, first uh, rod face group uh, that uh, pro professed the rod, and that started in uh, September of 2011, I believe, and that's uh, called Truth Tellers. And then, of course, you can reach us at uh, one of our uh, rod websites that's called hearyetherod.wordpress.com. So, uh, in, in closing, brother, we just want to let you know that as we search the... Uh, the message very closely and study to show ourselves approved we'll see very clearly that there is no such there is no type that the Lord comes down and purifies his, his groups of people and and uh, so therefore his message can go through in purity now we do know that the SDA church in whole will be purified at which time the 144,000 are disclosed and that is when the message shall go forth in purity throughout the world. But it's not before then. So let's keep this in mind and 
Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we hope to bring you another uh, Present Truth uh, study when the Lord meets. Until then, may God keep you. God bless.